Hello, my name is Daniel Beer. I'm a historian of modern Russia here at Royal Holloway, and I'm also the head of the history department. So one of the one of the principal questions, of course, which you know historians have been wrestling with um, ever since it occurred, you know, was why the February Revolution in 1917 is overtaken by the Bolshevik Revolution. So, you know, there are obviously lots of theories have been advanced um, in, in, in seeking to explain this. Some have focused on, you know, the Machiavellian abilities of the Bolsheviks, particularly the role of Lenin um, and his key lieutenant at that time, uh, Trotsky. Um, others have looked at, you know, looked at this through the prism of sort of class and the kind of the simmering class conflict uh, within Russia. Um, others have looked at the mistakes of the provisional uh, government. But I think um, my what what I on I mean, all of those points are true, right? So they're not. I mean, I'm, this is not this is not to say that those explanations are wrong. They all have some merit. Um, I think probably the single most important uh, reason why the February revolution and the provisional government um, lose support over the summer of 1917 you know in the context of you know the war going disastrously badly and you know the economy sort of going into free fall and you know all of, with all of those external pressures i think the fundamental problem is is still that russian society by 1917 was so profoundly polarized between basically the, the sort of the haves and the have-nots um, in Russia, unlike in m most of the rest of Central and uh, Eastern Europe, you didn't have really a property-owning peasantry. So you have tens of millions of peasants who don't own land, who are not really very invested in the existing social uh, order and who are, you know, whatever their feelings about individuals, you know, they might think they're individual, sort of the, the, the individual, you know, uh, member of the nobility who lives near them is quite a nice guy and the local merchant's not a bad guy, but there's a lot of, a lot of deep-seated antagonism which has sort of developed over centuries, um, which erupts in uh, 1917. Um, and I think that that social polarization, which is of course also reflected in, in the radical elements within the working classes, is one that will never really be accommodated within a liberal society. So basically the, the, the provisional government stands for a, a political uh, system that will give everyone uh, the vote. But actually, there is a lot of drive for a political system, and this is what the Bolsheviks harness, that will only give some people the vote and not a whole swathe of the rest of the population. So when Lenin arrives, as he does at the Finland station, um, on, um, and gets off the train on the 3rd of April 1917, and he says, all power to the Soviets, what he's actually saying is, um, all power only to workers, peasants and soldiers. There are no Soviets of, you know, landowners and, and you know, capitalists and merchants and so on. So he's basically calling for um, the expulsion from Russian political community um, of all of these groups. And this is a very, very powerful idea. And it's an idea that lots and lots of, um, of lower class Russians uh, find extremely uh, appealing. So really, by the summer of 1917, there were two competing ideas of democracy. There is democracy as a political system that we might recognize today where everyone gets a vote. And then there is democracy understood as a social class. So lower class Russians say we are the democracy, not them you know, the people who've been, you know, sort of eating all the pie for the last, you know, few centuries. And so I think what really is behind the Bolsheviks' success is their power to harness that social um, sort of antagonism and to encourage the polarisation uh, of, of, of the country just as more moderate and sort of liberal voices are trying to kind of hold it together. And I'm making these comments on pretty much the 
you know, the anniversary of the January 6th interaction um, in uh, Washington, D.C. And, you know, I think what happens in Russia in 1917 offers kind of salutary lessons about the way that unscrupulous political actors uh, can exploit uh, long-standing social, economic, political uh, grievances to kind of redefine what democracy should mean and, and who should be allowed you know, to vote and which, which votes matter and which people should be excluded from uh, political life. So there's a sort of, you know, I think there is a contemporary resonance here, probably a very uncomfortable one um, that is not too difficult uh, to uh, perceive.